All right, I'm going to uh, call the Town Council FY 2022 Budget Work Session to order of April 8th, uh, 2021. We're here at the Vincent Building. Uh, first item of business is Citizens Forum. Uh, I'm going to ask citizens to keep their comments to three minutes. If there's anybody that would like to come forward, uh, please do. Identify yourself and, and we'll hear you. I don't hear anyone. Carolyn, did we get any specific emails for public comments tonight? All right, I'm going to close that part down. Next, we're going to move into discussion. First, we're going to start with public utility tax rates. Who wants to be in charge? All right, so last, last time we talked about public utility tax rates. I had made a recommendation that we move the, the public utility tax rate up to $13. Uh, Council Vice President Klein was going to do some research. Wanted to see if you had any updates on that or if any other council members have any discussions. I do. I've, I've done some research here. We are... We are already charging demonstrably more than any other municipality uh, to the tune of, you know, even at the highest ranks, uh, two or three dollars more than than the next highest. Uh, the average is below a dollar per hundred dollars of assessed value. Um, Denton is charging a dollar seventy, which is you know, roughly double their personal tax, uh, their real property tax rate. Uh, Chestertown is, uh, doesn't have a public utility tax. Um, Easton, because they have their own utility, does not charge a public utility tax. Uh, so those are just how it sort of, but across the state, you roll through all these public utility tax rates, you're looking at, you know, $120, $1, 120 170 87 and you get to Centerville, seven dollars. So, just for a little context there, um, that's what I know as of right now. That's what it looks like in the surrounding towns and communities. Anybody have any comments or recommendations or anything you want to add? I looked at my uh, utility bills for the past three years. And the the tax rate has been the same through all of those. So so in um, April of 2019, the town's PUT was two dollars and eleven cents, and the rate was 0.00062. In 2020, the town's tax rate went to three dollars and eleven cents. The rate stayed the same, and then this last year it raised from 3.11 to seven dollars, and it's and it's raised this, and it's raised it stayed uh, exactly the same. Um, Delmarva's rates have actually gone up since uh since 2019 um so i do believe that it is spread out you know pretty much amongst everybody uh, i've got a family of five at home and in in uh, the delivery charge for example in april of 2019 for me was 45 dollars uh, a month and my tax was actually 58 cents so the, the the tax associated with this to my house was 58 cents um so it is spread out over a considerable uh, amount. Do we think that, you know, if we get to a point where Delmarva notices or whatever these other utilities are, they notice that Centerville is standing out as uh, an exorbitantly high, I mean, profoundly higher than any other municipality, uh, that it is within their capability to say to the folks in Centerville, here is your special rate that you have to pay on your bill just to sort of, uh, you know, pinch us a little bit I believe that these these tax rates are are set at the state level and or the federal government level and there's they can't they can't discriminate and say you guys need to pay this back when we considered raising this originally uh, I had talked to a bunch of different people and, and what they had said was what could possibly happen is uh, if, if a utility doesn't want to pay they can move their property out of the town, right? And so, you know, you do have the risk of a Delmarva saying we're going to move our we're going to move our building uh, and all of our personal property now. I think it'd be very difficult for Verizon and Delmarva to remove all of their telephone poles and all of that infrastructure. Now that's a much right. smaller part of their of their actual property, uh, but we do we do run that risk. You know, we, again going back to. Verizon or, or Delmarva, let's take, take Delmarva, right? 3.77 billion in profit. That's profit, right? 
That's three point seven seven billion in profit. I'm just wondering if the other towns have know they can raise the rate. Do they know they can raise the rate? Because we know. Do they know? I don't think they know. I did get a call last year when we were doing this inquiring. You know, tell me what happened, and I told them what happened, and they ended up not yeah. doing it. But yeah, no, I don't think the other any other towns looked right. at it. Is there any consensus for 13? Should we leave it at seven? Uh, I'm I'm not going to consent to 13. Uh, this just seems this seems arbitrary to me. Uh, and I do think there are steps they can take, whether it's moving the building out of town and or you know I, I'm not sure what prevents them from saying this is what the town of Centerville charges us, so we are going to pass that along. I don't know what that would look like, <laughs> um, but. I don't, I, I, funny. I, I don't know. I, I like Tim says, they're so big. Three point seven seven billion. I just I mean I, right, so we're, we're not even in noise level, I don't think. So it's at seven now. I, my recommendation was thirteen. Do you have a, a an opinion on it? Or uh, my opinion is that I kind of agree with your reasoning. If we can why not? We're, we're at a I'm point with where I'm with you too. Thirteen. Okay. About thirteen. Can we make that adjustment yep. for thirteen? I want my opposition to be reflected somehow. Thanks. Yeah. In fact, if you want, maybe what we can do is we could make a motion on it because this is all going to get put into a, a big budget at some point, right? And, yeah. and there are some things that you disagree with, maybe some things. So. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion that we move the public utility tax for the next fiscal year to thirteen dollars per one hundred. Uh, is there a second on that? Second. All right. Is there any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Will that help? Okay. Yep. And that'll be in your minutes, right, Carolyn? All right. Next, we're going to move into allocation of cost. Uh, at our last meeting, Steve had presented to us that I guess previously it was twenty percent. And that when you did some calculations, you looked at the realistic number was was more like 35 percent. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it was at 50, I think, when I came here nine years ago, and I think it went down to 40. And then, yep. you know, prior councils just made some adjustments to try to uh, make things budget. work. Um, you know, on the enterprise side, things things have you know leveled out a little bit uh, on that end. So, you know, if you're really looking at just true staff time that's spent on um, enterprise functions you know all the staff uh, that are involved which um, you know it's about 16 of us um, you know it seemed to average out at 35 percent okay does anybody have a uh, opinion on on you know making it more of a of a, a truer number which would be the 35 percent again what this would end up doing is the enterprise fund would be paying the general fund for the staff time uh, on the general fund Right now, it's at 20% of the of the overall. Uh, is it all payroll or is it just? It's A92 and C11, so administration and streets. Okay. All right. And it's 293873. At 20%. At yeah. At 35%, it would be 514279. And that takes this budget negative. Um, enterprise? No. I'm at, oh, I'm looking at the general fund. But it, no, it makes it in, in the positive. And, and again, I, you know, one of the other things about this is we're going to talk in a little while about the stimulus funds. And I think the stimulus funds are still kind of nebulous as to what we can use them for. But one, a couple of the things we absolutely know we can use them for is water and sewer. And so what this will do is this will transfer more money over to the general fund, which would allow us to therefore use it for general fund activities, right? I, you know, um, you want any comment? Yeah. Uh, I, I appreciated my one-on-one uh, -on -one with our town manager this past Tuesday. Uh, as well as Karen's discussion last couple of weeks and talking with Kip. But I think when Steve and I sat down on Tuesday, we went over this whole thing of 20% versus 35%.
And as you presented uh, in the past, or I forget who just said that, that it was at 50, it came down. And then, uh, as I think Steve said, uh, in the last year or two, it went to 20. And part of it was an arbitrary assignment between general and enterprise. And I, I support going back to the 35, which is uh, our town manager, our director of finance, our operations department head. They all know uh, that going from 20 to 35 is the appropriate percentage. And therefore, I think we need to bring it back up to 35 percent. Okay. Anybody else have any opinions, comments? Shelby? I tend to agree with what Bob said. Okay. Jeff? I agree. Steve? I'm good to go. Uh, on the, uh, the top cover sheet budget we have, we are transferring 75 percent of PUT to the oh. permanent fund. In the other budgets, it's 50 percent to the permanent fund. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. Do we want to do the 50? Yeah, I'm sorry. I we skipped that part. I should have done that. So, so it, it, what, it, what it was originally, it was 75% of the additional amount, which came out to be 42% of the total. And so what I had proposed last time was bring it to $13 and 50-50 even, even split. And if you look at the... Uh, you know the the drafts that she had, that, that Karen had put together for us. It's it is a 50-50 split if you do thirteen dollars. Does anybody you know feel about 50-50 versus 42-58? Uh, 50-50. Keep it simple. Okay. I agree. 50-50. And so what that is, it's um, eight hundred and half of. Just trying to find my sheet. I wanted you to know how much. 873,000 split 50-50 general fund is half and permanent funds half. All right, so we're good on that. Uh, do you want to move into the encumbrance approval? We get 33 for 35%? Yes. 35%. Yeah. <clears throat> What are we moving on to? Thanks for moving into encumbrance approval. Okay, so we have some funds um, that we revolve each year, the sidewalk um, fund, to talk about one of them. But what we like to do, there's some years we don't get to do as much, so if we encumber the money to the next fiscal year and just keep it as a revolving, it allows those funds to be used for the intended purpose instead of rolling back into fund balance. So during the budget process, when I worked with department heads, these four accounts or is that listed on the agenda yes. okay so the four accounts that are listed there are the accounts that um after meeting with department heads they thought should be revolving um and that would be snow removal in streets which you know if we have a year where we don't have any snow if that money rolled over and the next year we had a blizzard he would uh have enough funds to take care of all that and not have to ask um and in addition if we have some years where we don't use it and you've got a good amount of money, we may not necessarily need to fund it the following, right. the following year. It wouldn't have to be in that, the operating budget for that okay. year. Um, uniforms and clothing um, for streets, and I think that's mostly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because of the, where he doesn't have, like some years he gets a bunch of new people and he doesn't have the money to buy a uniform. So some years he doesn't and he has money left over. So if that can kind of revolve for him, he's able to, to purchase uniforms needed. And then the last two are the Park Advisory Board and the Cemetery Advisory Committee. Um, they're the funds that they get each year to be able to roll over. Some years they spend it all, some years they don't spend any of it. So they would like that to be able to roll over as well. How, how much are we talking about in these four accounts? Uh, snow removal's budget is 100, is it 100? 11,000. 11,000, okay. 11, I'm thinking of the street lights. Yes. Yeah, eleven. That's expensive. Yeah, snow removal is eighteen thousand this year. The park advisory board each year gets current, five. The current budget year is eighteen thousand. Yeah. What do we have budget for it in this budget? Do you know? Eighteen. 11, yeah. That, that's for this upcoming. I got a lot of attachments here. I don't so know in twenty one, we've spent our budget. FY twenty one, the budget was seventeen thousand. In twenty two, it's going to be eighteen thousand. What are we rolling forward? 
whatever's left, whatever's unspent. So right now, as of April 7th, that line, oh, it is 11,000. You're right, Kip, yeah, I'm sorry. So it's 11 each year. And what has been spent to date is 2,300. So if there was no more spent, which I don't see it, we would roll over 8,700. So we will be funding $25,000 or north of $25,000 next year on not funding it so it doesn't go in the budget it stays in fund balances tagged to use for so it's like he like, still has the availability of the funds but the budget doesn't so the budget will still say 11,000 anything revolving is just what's in fund balance tagged for that specific purpose there would be $25,000 available to you just what said a point of reference Tim will remember and Steve uh, we were well over 120 Matter of fact, there's over 125,000 with one snowstorm in 2016. Yeah, Jonas. And and historically, I think those were one of the budget items that we made really small because we wanted the budget to look good, like we wanted to make exactly. the budget work out, right? And so. And yeah. yes, we got some FEMA funds, but no, it covered nowhere near. I didn't even cover half of the expenses. Like 40, <coughs> 40, yeah. Uh, yeah. What is rolling over for the Cemetery Advisory Committee? What, what so their budget is 90% um, of the interest earned on the perpetual care. So right now, this is the first year they have a budget, and their budget's like $3,200. So any of that that would be unspent? would roll over into their 37. Thank you. Yep. All right, I'm okay with all four of these being encumbered. Yeah. I am too. Yep. All right, we're good. Next capital projects, enterprise funds. I would just add oh. on the, uh, the Park Advisory Board and the Cemetery Committee, they also were requests from the actual boards and, and committees. It wasn't, wasn't just a staff request. Okay. Might have made that request before you came on board, Shelby. Yeah. So just so I'm clear, Karen, we're, we are looking at sort of the closest thing to real time for us is 22 draft general fund operating budget with 35% allocation and $13 public utility tax. That's the yeah, and so what I did is I printed the entire budget once to show you all the changes from last week. And then I just printed the summary sheet for um, the $7 with 35%, the 20% with, yeah. So that's general fund side, what you're looking at. With 35%, 13 PUT, it does have the capital in it, the comp payout, the new salary, the end of service payout, and the positive um, transfer to fund balance and a year would be two hundred nine thousand seven thirty nine. And the comp, the comp payout and the end of end of service payout, you envision those being encumbered in the future like this? Yes. So that we build but up a reserve fund there. Well, the comp yeah. payout we would not, because oh. that that would right. be an annual payout. Based the end on of service you would yeah. would yeah. accumulate. And then at some point when we feel like we have enough. You would, may not have to budget it for right. a few years. Exactly. Right. So, the, so the fifteen thousand that we budgeted for the comp payout—that's what we anticipate by the end of next year. That would be finished, whether it was thirteen thousand paid out, you know, and then it'd be done. Then you'd ask for this, roughly the same amount the following year. Okay. okay. Any other questions before we move on to capital projects for enterprise funds? Right. I will um, tell you also that in the general fund capital projects that were approved last week, there was three items, the three point hitch boom mower, is that what it's mm -hmm. called? The excavator. Excavator. And the trailer. And the trailer. And then what was the other one? Because we lumped them together. Pickup truck. Pickup truck. Yeah, the DPW yeah. truck. So at, with the approval on the general fund side, I went ahead and put the, the 126500 in the enterprise fund to show that already since it was split between the funds. If you're to look at the enterprise fund operating budget with 35% allocation costs that page, right? Uh, yeah, that it's only the enterprise summary is only in the very first packet. 
Mine is on the Mine is on the Enterprise six. is not affected by the Yeah. That's what it's at the bottom, right? So there's um, 126,500 already accounted for. Is that in the stuff you printed out for us today? It's the very first, so the packet I gave you, the very first page is the, no, is the um, general and enterprise fund summaries. Yeah. The very, very first, it's got, it was the bigger, Got thicker. probably got your name on it? Yeah. It's uh, the page. Well, I, I got the one that was printed out in the six. It's not any different though, is it? No. Well, no. I'm looking at fiscal year 2022 draft enterprise fund operating budget with 35% allocation of costs. Right? 13 20%. PUT. The one you just got today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 13 PUT. I think. <clears throat> yeah, that's what's at the top well, of the Well, there's page. no PUT on the enterprise. Right. right. So I didn't read. So when I reprinted this extra summaries in the back for the general, I didn't reprint enterprise because 13 didn't. Right. Affect. Okay. All right. I think I can go on that. So it shows the. Um, I've already included 126,500 of the requests in the enterprise fund. I've already placed them in the summary sheet as the general fund side was approved. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Right, just so that I'm looking at this correct, it's 2930402 is revenues, is that right? Same number? Yep. Uh, cost transfer is 514.279. Yeah. Uh, and then transfer to fund balance is 21210. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so if we go based just on what we have now, we've got twenty-one thousand dollars for additional capital projects. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Sorry. In the enterprise budget. In the, in the, the enterprise. enterprise. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, you know, one of the things I know we're not really talking about the fiscal recovery act funds yet, but the fiscal recovery fund act are, are specifically talking about infrastructure improvements in water and sewer infrastructure. And so that's pretty much what all of this, uh, all of this is. The capital budget request for the enterprise fund. Yeah. So I came up with, uh, if you take out the farm, right, the buying of the farm, the capital budget requests are 1.374355, 1, 1,374,355. Excuse me. They got the 126. You got to take the 126 one, out. Yeah, you 1247855. Already... So if we took that directly from the stimulus money, we would still have $2.884 million remaining in the stimulus funds. If we're not getting all the money this year. Right, we'll get half. Two we're getting it all in this fiscal year. Yeah, my assumption is yes, because if we get it before June 1st, the second one would come. The same is supposed to be exactly a year from the date of the first payment. Correct. And the, the email that we originally got said it would come in 60 days from the date they passed that. So it's within bill. 60 days to the state and the state has 30 days to pass to us. So 90 days if you. That's mid June. Yeah. That, yeah. And that's why. So if you decided to push through some of these, you could say some of these can wait until the very end of the next fiscal year. Right. So again, looking at that, it's 1.247855 to, to let, to give that catch up from all the years that we haven't been able to do it. Um, again, everything except for the farm at this point. So I'm good with all, all of those, I'm good with all of those requests. Anybody want to go through the capital line by line or? Yes, uh, okay. yes. All right, so page six of the capital sheet I gave you would be the beginning of the enterprise fund. The capital um, I gave you should be like next to the last thing in the packet I gave you tonight. So it's pages six, seven, yep. and eight, correct? Six through 10. And you said it's in the last section? Uh -huh. Of like, I think I'm next to the yes. Yeah. Sorry, six. guys. Yeah. I know. Okay. I know. You mean to help us see? Each. Perfect. Thank you. You know, we'll have colored paper next year. <laughs> and I even put colored stickers on mine, so I wouldn't. I'll have to tab it. Colors. 
And it was just a lot of different options. Next time you see it, it'll be one budget. <laughs> With everything decided. <coughs> So we'll go line by line, pages six through ten. Mm -hmm. Page ten is I have six through nine. Okay. Do you have a page ten? I have a page <coughs> ten. I, have a page. <coughs> I go ten to then sixty-three. It's for some reason the printer when it Carolyn didn't have time to help me fix the margins. No, no, no. Where's the packet that Karen oh. gave you? tonight here oh. it's in here okay sorry that's all right so it should be I think it's that should be a small pack small hmm. packet enterprise fund right oh that? here this is the general funds on top Oh, hang on. <coughs> so you're going to you. start okay. there. Yeah, got it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, right. that should be six through ten. Sorry. Okay. If we didn't have so many different options, and you, you wouldn't have so many packets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next week, I promise it'll be one. Okay. With everything on it. All right. Is everybody on the same page? Page yep. number four, right? Six. Six. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm not correcting you. <laughs> Oh. Uh, who's got the tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> There's no wire screen. Yes. All right, Karen, Kip, we'll give it over to you guys. Right. Kip, do you kind of want to? Yeah. Okay. Um, enterprise fund, uh, first one, wastewater there, first dollar, uh, sewer collection repairs system. Uh, this is to address the I and I to help us regain some capacity. Regain some capacity in our wastewater treatment plant. To Is this like off? It doesn't appear to be on. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, the first item under the wastewater uh, enterprise fund capital improvements uh, uh, sewer collection repair system 350,000 this is to address the I and I uh, regain some capacity in our wastewater treatment plant uh, we have some things planned for that uh, below that I and I study uh, this is the to come up with a feasibility and some options that we can do to um, help regain uh, some of that capacity do away with some uh, poor lines that we have and reduce the uh, the actual uh, it says consider kept reestablishing collection of the I and I fees what does that mean all right there there was a um, an I there was a charge that was charged to um, I guess it was on developers. Any, 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 anytime that, somebody that had bought. water and sewer allocation, there was a 200, the, the, the dollar amount was $275 per allocation. And, uh, and that was supposed to be, uh, and that was based on the previous uh, study was $138,000, I think. And the, it was determined that $275 and until such time as that 138,000 was paid, paid off, um, that the town would collect that per allocation. Um, we had one of these studies done in 2004, two somewhere five or six. It, it, they they no, I think they started it in four and it wound up it was finished up in six. Um, did I mean did that help us prioritize? I mean the question I'm trying to get is a lot of money for a study, and I'm just curious if 150 thousand would be better spent on actually doing the work. So if we plussed up sewer collection system repairs i mean do we know where the i and i problems are based on the old study can we get in there and make more hay with one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on doing the work or studying the work not all the pro i'll put it this way the study that was done back then 
a lot of that we have already addressed, um, but there's new places that weren't included in that study that we need to get into now. Uh, it's gonna cost a little bit of money to, to get that done and give you the options. Uh, this is what we can do and this is what it's gonna cost, or we can do this and this is what it's gonna cost. And that previous study did prioritize repairs that the town then undertook and we were able to get that much more capacity to sell. One of the things that, uh, that uh, Kip was uh, talking about the other day, um, that this particular analysis that we're looking for is to evaluate the need for maybe an additional pump station because it could be that with an additional pump station, it could very well help eliminate some of the pipeline that has I and I, and, and one of the other issues too is one of the problem areas that this uh, pump station may may address is the the interceptor pipe that goes along the trail, um, the millstream trail. So, just the fact that if one of the ways to you know uh, fix the I and I is replace it, you're now dealing with a very environmental sensitive area to go in and replace all that pipe. So one of the things that uh, Kip thought you know, would be important to know is can we re-look re at the pump and station uh, alignment and arrangements that that could help you know, uh, give us a different alternative instead of trying to go in these sensitive areas, you know, dealing with all the permits and, and, and the cost um, of trying to replace some of those pipes. What, what was the f daily flow before Liberty and Commerce was completed. Can you can you just off the top of your head ballpark what that was? I can't tell you off the top of my head. Um, there was one point we reclaimed 11,000 gallons a day. I can remember that. Uh, but to be able to compare it to what we're doing right now because we've picked up other I and I in other places, even though we fixed that. Uh, but that $11,000 was just, um, it was 11,000 like, gallons? I'm sorry? Gallons? 11,000 gallons a day was one manhole that we know for sure we got that much back out of just one manhole, not counting what we got back replacing those lines. So, um, you have a URS are the ones that did that, and they put a case study together that I'm, I'm sure we probably have that big thing where it showed the INI study and then with the repairs that we actually did. You remember that? Yes, and I have that in my office. I'm trying to track down all of the information that went with that study or came from it, and I don't have all of it at this point. Of course, that was before Steve and I were here, so uh, some of that information is going back to URS or AECOM, as they're called now, and getting it from them. Um, just as a side note for this, the other thing, if this study shows that uh, things will, would work this way, like Steve was explaining and putting this other pump station in to elimin, eliminate so many feet of the south interceptor, the other thing it will do is give us more capacity in the south pump station because the amount that goes through that new pump station will go directly to the wastewater plant and won't go through to South Pump Station. So you're, you're pretty much getting double the bang for your buck. So for while you're saying, this is really not a, just a wave your hands, uh, look at, you know, generate paper. You're really doing an analysis of what is the state of our system. Mm -hmm. And by looking at the state of our system, what you're saying, you already got 11,000 gallons out of one little area. Mm -hmm. And, I, and uh, Steve poured over the map with me uh, just Tuesday, right? Where we identified all the areas that this I and I study is going to look. And while, yes, <clears throat> you know, 150,000 for a study seems, well, you know, but it could end up saving money. It's gonna, yeah. it's definitely gonna bring you back capacity in your plant. <laughs> right. It's gonna help us to identify other areas. Right. 
that we know we have a problem, but they can pinpoint. And, and, and it's a study that hasn't been done for almost 20 years. Is that what I understand? Oh, yeah. 15. 15, 15 anyhow. So, right. And um, with the age of our systems, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we, you guys ran into a big one with Commerce and Liberty. This is needed so the town can move forward and have a efficient water system. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Now, the other thing, some of the paperwork that I've found from the previous study, not all of the work that was, um, you know, required to complete everything on that study was done. There's a list of things there that still haven't been addressed. For us to do? Yes. That's what I'm getting at, right? All, oh, this, this, I'm this. All right. Commentary aside, I would just say I'm we sorry. we we it, would you. I'm not suggesting we scrap $150,000 from the budget for this study. Uh, I'm saying we we spend it on actually fixing I and I that we know is out there. And yeah. and that's this portion of it will address some of the items that's on that list that's not done yet. My concern uh, in bringing this the, up is we did a study 15 years ago. We've never had, you know, we've never had more I and I than we have right now. Um, and we're over I'm a million say, dollars yes, of debt, a I'm million say gallons. That's correct. The, the other thing is this: this study isn't the same as the last study. This, the last study identified the places. The other thing: this is going to address the I and I, not to identify the places. If you understand what I'm saying. Sure. We know that this place was one of the places found in that original study. They did a little Band-Aid work here and there, but that's all that was done to to address the rest of it. Except it was, for Liberty and Commerce, right? I mean, that... Liberty and Commerce, yeah, it's not counting Liberty and Commerce at all. Right. So this is the study for the feasibility of getting rid of that much of the South Interceptor line and putting the, the pump station in, which okay. wasn't addressed. Just to give you just another perspective on, you know, one of the things that had been considered in the past was to put some type of slip lining inside of pipes. And, and some of that work that was done in the town, we have found that it, it did not pan out. So we know really the only true solution to fixing any I and I in a pipe is you gotta replace it, you know, get rid of it completely. Or in this particular case, what, what we're trying to explain, to do this analysis on this pump station concept, it will help eliminate having to replace pipe in an area that's going to be very expensive, pretty much driving sheathing down in the ground all the way in a sensitive area. Um, you know, it's going to be very expensive. So if we can get this, you know, somebody to help analyze you know, this concept of, of putting pump stations in a different location that can take some of this I and I pipeline out of the system. Plus the other benefit is Kip explained, you know, is to pick up some extra capacity in the pump station that's already there. So that's that's another plus that you're gonna get out of it. That's not the main purpose of it, but it's a plus. So thank you. So without somebody analyzing that, uh, you know, we're we're yeah, we can go out and, and try to, you know, fix a pipe here and there. I mean, I asked the same question when I was meeting with, with Mike and Kip and just said, uh, you know, can we spend, you know, the money on just fixing some repairs? But this 150, you know, it's not going to go anywhere um, to fixing some of the major problems that we have, you know. So if we can just get a, a better solution, um, it's going to be major savings in the long run. I don't uh, need to go through any more of this. That's what I had questions okay. on. Anybody have any other questions on uh, Enterprise? Are we in consensus that we're good uh, with, with what it's saying? Less the uh, farm. Less the farm. Yeah, let's, yeah. We, let's talk I about have, that. I have stuff. one thought. Yep. Uh, I noted it last week about the fire hydrant replacement program. Uh, we're budgeting for one per year at $8,000. This is a public safety issue, I think, for our volunteer fire company and for our residents. God forbid there's a fire. Our, and our 
am I saying that uh, why can't we well, increase the number of fire hydrants to replace if there are available funds? I, I will put it this way. Yes, if there are available funds, I would love to do that. Um, a little background on that, those fire oh. hydrants. We've gotten all of the fire hydrants, and Jeff can attest to this, that were so old, the uh, nozzles on the fire hydrant were a different size than today's yeah, standard. Yeah. And we've been able to get rid of them. These last eight that we have um, are old fire hydrants that we can no longer get parts for, right. but they are not out of service. So in other words, the fire company can hook to them okay. and can use them. But as soon as something breaks in that hydrant, they're going to be put out of service then. And we don't know which of the eight is going to break. Is that what I'm hearing? What we did, we started at the with the oldest fire hydrant because we oh, have the, the dates of the fire. Okay. Hydrant. All right. We started with the oldest and progressed forward from there. Um, we also, some of the things that we looked at, it just happened that way, that the age correlated with it too. But we also looked at the areas that those fire hydrants were in. And what if there serve. was a major problem in that area, that's where one of the fire hydrants that would be used. So Where there is maybe like high density, higher density residents, like the apartments um, or something? Yeah, more like larger buildings, like right, okay. something like the Board of Ed or apartment buildings rather than just single family homes. Okay. Not to, no disregard to them by any means, but oh, no, no. we were looking but, at the uh, higher. Yes. I'm sure right. I, I'm, I love your analysis. Uh, I'm sure you, I, I think you're doing the right thing. Do but my thought is. If, if we were to get two or three done. No, I, I don't have any not problem. Not necessarily all eight, but. Right, I don't have any problem, and that uh, $8,000, we can probably do it cheaper than that, but that's where I'm at to cover oh. the, the budget. The other thing is, the only reason I put one per year in there, because I didn't want to take something else out of the budget. Oh, no, I, I hear that you. was just my explanation. But if we're, uh, as Tim just summarized, if we have just come to the point on the enterprise fund, that we're okay with everything except the farm. Does that, on the enterprise fund, do we have anything left there? Well, so Karen? so so why don't we let's let's do the enterprise as presented, and then if there's money left over, we can talk about oh, it. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. The, I, the, I, I wanted to bring that up because yeah. I see that That's as totally a. Fine. You know, and, and again, I want to make sure that I didn't mean to say that I'm that we're taking the farm out. It's just let's oh, have no, the farm no. as a different discussion. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah. Uh, one other question I have for you about the about the, the replacement of the uh, fire hydrants. Do you have the labor to get them done? Right. So there's no point in putting in eight if you can only get one done because of all the other stuff you got to do. That price is contracted out okay. because we okay. don't have the, the labor to do it. Okay. Where if we get fully staffed and we can do it ourselves. That's definitely the plan to do it in-house. But that's why I was trying to explain that's why it's at $8,000. So, so if at the end we've got an extra $56,000 and everything else has been paid for, that will take care of we'll all them all. Yes. yes. Okay. It's one of those get it get it done so we don't have to worry about it. Come yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank all right. You. So are there any other questions about enterprise funds? And then we'll move on. Anybody else want to go over anything on enterprise? No questions. Okay. All right. So moving into, uh, so if we've if we're in agreement that the, we're going to be paying for the enterprise funds, we're we're approving that capital budget. That money has to come from somewhere. And, and if you know we looked at the budget, the enterprise budget now, what do we have? Twenty one thousand dollars or uh, yeah, twenty one two ten. Twenty one two ten. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming the remainder of that is going to be coming. The remainder of the rest of the enterprise capital requests are coming from the. The fiscal recovery. Fiscal recovery, right? Which would now give us two point eight eight four million. Is that right? Since I've got so many pieces of paper, what's the delta between the enterprise capital and twenty one two ten? What's the delta between what? I'm sorry. The the total capital enterprise capital budget and what we have twenty one two ten. Uh, I'm trying to find my total sheet. 776, is that, no, that's not for anything, is it? All right, 
so 776 plus 270. Three hundred and one five hundred. So a million three forty seven five hundred. One point three four seven five hundred, sorry. And then take twenty one two ten away from that. Yep. So one three two six two nine. Okay, so take the full amount of the 4132181, which is the fiscal recovery that we're getting, right? And then you're subtracting out, what did you say, 1247? One, one. three, two, six, two, nine. All right, can you give me that number? Two million seven ninety three seven ten. So I've got three, three recommendations based on the remainder of the money. Uh, I, as I have said before, I think we should put $500,000 towards a broadband pilot. I'm happy to have a, a discussion and some research on that. I believe that we should put $350,000 towards project management work over the next four years. The money has to be spent by December 31st, 2024. And so if you put $100,000 in each of the next three budgets, and then a half a year, right, for that final, it's got to be spent by the end of December, that would give us $350,000 to provide for extra professional level management to take some of the burden off of you guys. Some of it can be used in general fund. If we're going to do broadband, you know, some of it can be used in, in, the, in the enterprise fund as well. Uh, but I've, I believe have for a long time that we've had a, a deficit in higher level leadership project management that can take on these things. So, so there's 500,000 that I recommend for broadband, 350,000 for project management, and then one and a half million for a farm. So the price that we've got for the farm is two and a half million. If we, if we paid one and a half million, that would give us a million that we would need to take out a loan. And based on rent that we could get from selling crops, that that million dollar loan would be paid for by the rent. So it would be zero cost. Up until such point as we need to go spend more money on, uh, on, on putting in a system or whatever, right? So one question. Yep. When you say higher level project management, that's a contractual. That would be, that would be a contractual position as opposed to full-time employee. And this would be with a rep, this would, would this be an RFP? A request for, I mean, not just going out and saying, oh, I like him or her. I mean, I, I think it could be done based on what their recommendation <coughs> is, right? I mean, I mean you, you could interview for a contract no, or you no. do an RFP. We, we possibly are like, th you know, three different people to, to do the work because, you know, just like what we go through now, you know, we don't have the time as far as Kip and myself to put together bids and specs. Correct. You know, yes. So, yes, we would be just, you know, hiring different people. Um, you know, we would just put something out there saying we're looking for some people to help us do these type of things. And we would have a couple people already that we've used. We would probably give them some more work. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I un fully understood the, the term that Tim was using. Yep. Thank you. So, for example, let's say we decided we wanted to go with a broadband project, a broadband pilot. There's going to be an RFP that we're going to have to put out there and, and a company or companies that are going to be helping us with that. But I think we also need to get someone who's going to kind of manage that from a town standpoint. And I don't think Steve or Kip or you guys don't have that We time. would then probably need somebody with experience in that. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that skill. Level. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to hire the, the project manager who doesn't know it. So, yes, right. it would be. It would no, be um, just, uh, and, and the good part about it being a contractor is once that's done, that's not a payroll thing anymore. Right. They're done. Right. right. Uh, this broadband thing, uh, having uh, started working uh, with the county's broadband advisory committee, and I, lo I was very pleased when Megan made her presentation to us. Uh, and we currently have a fiber optic technology uh, company finishing up with 
uh, Northbrook, correct? Mm -hmm. It will be, yes. Right. And that uh, he's already, I, I believe Steve and Kip uh, talked to Symphony Village about their interest of having that installed, correct? Yes. And that when a permit is issued for Symphony Village, there has to be a certain uh, tailoring of the permit to reflect what is in the covenants of Symphony Village, correct? I don't know that that it, only if it's yes. I take that back. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, okay. correct. So we've that would say that the two bookends of the town have an increased broadband capability, and that what you're addressing is the core of the town of Centerville. I would call it the areas of town that are less commercially attractive to private companies investing their money in doing that. So if you look at a, at a Symphony Village or a Northbrook, those houses are real close together. There's already underground utility easements. They can just go in there and use all of that stuff. Right, Whereas right, if you right. take the core of town, right. you either have to deal with going under a sidewalk and then the town is the only one that has the easement for that. Yeah, or you might have to go above, Aerial. above aerials. Yeah. So it's, it is more complicated then. And you also may not be getting as many houses, you know, bang for the buck, as many houses per mile. Correct. Yeah. So would that be, I'm just, uh, I fully agree that broadband is uh, paramount for the town's economic development and for our citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've seen it with uh, the pandemic and our children suffering. Of course, a lot of them have not had full capability to have broadband. So I am supportive of uh, Tim's initiative, and I think it just has to be, who knows what, maybe what somebody's gonna come in. I've heard things like, you know, 5G might come in with Verizon or somebody. I think we need to, uh, I, I, it appears the county's got their fingers on the pulse. So, so what, you know, what, what I believe we would do is we would look to go to work with a nonprofit, okay, because then it's not a profit motive, right? So a place like Maryland Rural Broadband who, deal, who, yes. who works with right. for-profit companies, but also their goal, their mission is to serve rural areas, right? They would, they would be able to come in and give us a, they would look at what we've got and say, okay, here's where we would recommend you're going to, you should go first, right? And, right. and, and they've already got relationships with the owners of the telephone poles so there's not like we wouldn't have the town wouldn't have to then go and say all right how much is it to rent this pole how much is it to rent that right so they've already got all that stuff done right um in addition westminster maryland uh, on the western shore they've done this before okay. and what they've done is instead of going up on the telephone poles in many areas they go right underneath they do they drill conduit underneath the sidewalks because the town owns an easement to put in utilities underneath sidewalks Drilling is typically more expensive, but it's better long term right. uh, to go under. So, the town. So the five, needs... the, whatever the money you're talking about is to augment what to help the nonprofit bring services to the town. Uh, That's correct. Okay. And then at some point, it, it would also the other part is that it would be an open access network, so that if you live in this core of town, right. you can then choose from any broadband provider to get your internet service. And, and if I remember correctly from voting, uh, Maryland Rural was there with a table passing out literature. Yeah. I have it in my library, so to speak. So, so the other part about it as well is, is that Maryland Rural Broadband would then be able to give back a certain portion of their revenue, not all of it, right? Right, and they have to, they have to Because survive. they're gonna maintain yeah. the lines right, and all right. that stuff. So then we can, you know, depending on how far we get with the initial broadband project, Maybe we can then do more, right? I have no idea how far five hundred thousand oh, yeah, dollars would go, yeah. but but if we get that part out and we get subscribers, then we might be able to do even more. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And, and it's addressing uh, the hardest sections of our town from a from a commercial viewpoint. The company coming in. Correct. Okay. Well, I just wanted to. I enjoy uh, our discussions, Tim. Okay. I think it's a very productive. All right. Anybody have any comments on broadband or project management? Yeah, I've got a lot of comments on broadband. So okay. I don't, I don't, I don't think this is the role of municipal government. 
Uh, I'm sitting here looking at a capital budget out to FY26 that's got millions of dollars in deferred maintenance backlog. And we are suggesting spending $500,000 on something that manifestly will not benefit all people in town. I don't think this is the role of town government. I mean, I, I think you're, uh, we're talking about while we spend $500,000, we're going to put a million and a half dollars on the debt books to buy a farm. That seems not responsible to me. Uh, and I, you know, I just, I'm in a neighborhood where I've got kids. So I just heard somebody say kids aren't thriving on broadband. Everyone who wants broadband in the town of Centerville has access to it. Every single person in broad Centerville that wants broadband has access to it. 25 megs upload there. I've got five kids in my basement. We have had no internet problems. I want broadband. I'm willing to pay a private company to provide it to me. That's what I think, uh, that's who I think fills this role for the town of Centerville. I have not heard a private company say that they cannot make downtown Centerville work profitably. I don't want to just make these assumptions because it's what we believe. 5G is wireless. It's got nothing to do with wired internet in your home. I mean, we, this, this is not the role of municipal government. And we are going to find ourselves with this money spent, this $4.1 million spent, and all these problems on this list right here, and all the ones that are going to accrue in the meantime are still going to be there. So three years from now, what are we doing? Or two years from now, we're raising the property tax rate. That's what we're doing. I couldn't be any more opposed to this idea. So I'm surrounded by 85-year-old neighbors who don't want to use this revenue. I can assure you, they don't know what broadband internet is. This does not benefit everybody in town. So we're making a choice to benefit people that want it. The people that want it can probably pay for it. So uh, let's, bring, let's bring Talkie in. It is not the municipal okay. government's responsibility that, to fund this. Ask. Let's bring Talkie into town and let them tell us they can't make money in downtown Centerville because that's not what they told me. Okay, I, I agree with you on that point, Steve. Let's bring Talkie in. I even reached out to Andre couple of weeks ago about him making an appearance with that that I think would be appropriate is I think that, bring just talkie you can bring any anybody oh, yeah, that wants anybody, to come in should right. be able to come in but not currently talkie talk is you know I mean for, for 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 months we've heard about how we have all this stuff to catch up on mm -hmm. and we haven't even gotten started on catching up on it yet and now we find something new to spend it on to me that I'm a, a hard no. I encourage everybody to vote no on this. So, so here's, here, here's the way that I look at this, right? The fiscal recovery funds have been, it's, it's kind of open as to what it can be used on. It's, we're, we're told what it can't be used on. There are, there are three main things that it can be used on from a, from a municipal government standpoint, right? Water and sewer infrastructure, water infrastructure, sewer infrastructure, and broadband. So there is a push from the federal government on down to the state government, to the county government, uh, saying that broadband is clearly important for rural communities and that there are not necessarily private companies that are going to put it in and therefore they need to have, in a rural area, they need to have uh, assistance. We have access to what the federal government defines as high-speed internet right now today. So when Congress writes bills that say rural broadband, they are not talking about downtown Centerville. They are talking about 320 Dean Road, mm -hmm. where it's Hughes, Hughes Net and a satellite, mm -hmm. or these uh, cul-de-sac communities, Foxtail Ridge, I mean, just right outside of town, where there is no option except for maybe a Verizon jetpack. I mean, we water and sewer, we've got millions and millions of dollars a backlog on water and sewer. Let's let's focus on the stuff that's broken. This is not the business for the town of Centerville to be in. All right, so I think we should go with five hundred thousand for broadband. You're obviously not in favor of that. Let's get you know let's get a consensus or or not a consensus. I'm betwixt and between a little bit. I'm listening to both. Okay, I'm a proponent of broadband. Mm -hmm. 
Me too. Uh, and I and I I hear Steve. He's making up good points. Uh, Karen, can you help me in where is the out years here for cat, uh, repairs and stuff? Is it in our book? Yes, it's the. It was in the original packet given. It was the five year capital plan. Let's look for the yellow highlighting. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that's what I, I, I'm just. Yeah. And so we haven't addressed that, is what I'm hearing Steve say. Yeah, I mean, so, so one of the things that we're looking at is with water and sewer rates, the, one of the purposes of raising the rates was it's going to dip down 25% last year, 25% this year, and then over, over time it should be able to increase, uh, not necessarily to the full amount of replacement costs, but closer to it. So, so we just, but not to interrupt you, we just had an increase in rates. We have $21,000 to spend on the enterprise fund without this money. Mm -hmm. Because the rates that we increased, la one of the reasons is because the rate increase that we had last year wasn't enough that we should have. That we should have right, so, so this year we'll get another 21000 Takes a lot of 21000s to address what's on this list. Okay. All right, so, so why don't we do this? Why don't we hold off on any decision on the broadband until next week? Um, how are we doing on, how, how does everybody feel about project managers? Boy, I don't want to hire a project manager to handle broadband. Hmm. Uh, I mean, if you guys say you need it, yes. then let's talk about need it. it. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I guess my, my question, my question, Steve, would be, does it make more sense to hire somebody full-time that can handle this stuff for us? Um, I don't think we need to hire full time. I mean, I think uh, as was discussed earlier, you know, hiring people on a contractual basis because you know this this is a you know, a, a situation where you're trying to take care of a lot of these capital projects that you've all approved in both budgets, you know, general fund enterprise. So we just need some people, you know, to help us out over the next couple of years. Hopefully, things will level out after that. I'm not saying. At some point in time, maybe you know you could the town could use somebody on a regular basis every year um, to do it, but uh, you know as long as we have the money to at least pay contractual, you know. I'm, you I'm still need the it. same numbers he outlined if we're not doing broadband. Um, yeah, I would say you know the, the same amount of money. Just you know can't can't give you the exact amount, but you know we just need we need people to help get the work done. Uh -huh. You're going to be, you know, pretty uh, inundated for two years. You know, this, what was this that year, number next again? Year. I said 350,000, and what that would do is that would be 100,000 okay. per fiscal year, starting July 1st, and then an extra 50,000 for the final half of the fiscal year. It's got to be spent by so 20, 24. 22, 23, 24. 24 would be half a year. 24 would be half a year. No, a year and a half. A year, huh? year and a half. Yeah. 150. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go into part of 25. Right. Yes, right. I'm fine with that. And then the other thing that I was talking about was, uh, was uh, you know, the farm. So just to correct you, you did say that, that we're going to borrow 1.5 million, and I, I said actually a million. So if we, if we spent one and a half million on the farm <coughs> in cash and we took out a loan for a million, it would be covered by rent. rent. I don't think we're going to get a 300 acre farm for a million and a half dollars. Right. So if you, if you did it, so what, what they're looking at here in our budget is two and a half million. Right. So if you pay one and a half million oh, in cash and then a million yeah. in, a, yeah, yeah. in a loan, the, the mortgage yes. payment on that loan would be less than the revenue that we would be bringing in based on, uh, based on the, the rent. I mean, you know, one of the things is a philosophical question of this is a, critical important thing is getting this farm. I mean, it's the beginning of, of everything, right? And, yes. and it's, it's super important to get it. Well, I agree with that. What is the current cash, cash rent revenue? 40, 50? 50. 59. And, and what, would the, what would the annual payment on a million dollar loan be? So the 800 and some thousand we had at Queenstown, the uh, mortgage was 45,000, one payment per year. So pretty close. What was it? Was that 30 years? What was the amortization on that? Amortization? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was 15 or 20. Yeah. Yeah. And each year, just every five years, it went up a few thousand. 
Okay. But it went up from 45,000 to 47 or 48, you know, every three years, went up to two or three thousand dollars. I do, in looking at this wonderful uh, yellow pages, okay, um, there is, if I read it right, 2023 has $3 million worth of water and sewer in it. And I can, as Steve is talking about, that might be, I mean, if one of the thrusts of the relief plan is to do water and sewer, I mean, there is, uh, I'm looking at all the different streets that need sanitary sewer remain replacement. And then the, in 2024, there's this big $12 million dollar what is that water wastewater treatment plant upgrade in 2024 which may be there or you can maybe push it out another year depending upon what actions are being done this year next year and the year after to make sure we do not exceed the 80 percent capacity limit correct my so, so the whole out? crux of that is all has to start with a farm. So that's probably one of the most important things that we need to get. If we decide on going after a new farm, then that's going to help us with putting all of those other things in a, in a timeline. Um, you're you're going to need that land no matter what. No, no, I, mm -hmm. I, I understand. No, we, no matter we've when the day about comes that, that you expand On the a couple of occasions already, I know. But I'm uh, addressing what Steve was talking about of uh, whatever, 500,000 for broadband where, why does, why do we want to get into the business of a broadband? Is that, am I saying anything wrong there, Steve? Nope. And that uh, $500,000 allocation, if I look at 2023, Wow, that can be, that can make some impact in places where people might need water and sewer. Uh, I'm just, I think before we, I'm going to throw something out. I always do this and I'm not going to stop, but possibly um, let's, let's look at, you know, 500,000 broadband, look at what's coming up in 2023, which the relief fu plan funds can be used for. Are there some of the streets that are higher priority to get their sewer main replaced because of their age? I mean, right now, this is, it's a laundry list, okay? Which is fine, but can we, you? We have a priority form, yes, yeah. if that's what you're asking. Could we possibly, look at that next present that to us next week so we can address okay a or b or maybe c i mean that's what we're here to do make an informed decision not oh let's throw five hundred thousand in an issue or this or that uh, let, let me be clear no, no, um, i'm not looking at, i'm not i'm not speculating that we're just throwing five hundred thousand no, no, dollars. Uh, okay, I was, uh, that's a wrong choice of words okay. then. Okay, but it's an option. How's that? Right? Yeah. I mean, we're getting four point one million. As Steve is uh, saying, let's use his belief is let's use it for more of the greater good. Where I respect his opinion of we he doesn't believe the town should get into the broadband business or uh, you know I, I would I would like to look into see what does Maryland what rural Maryland rural broadband yeah Maryland rural broadband um, would they you know could they come in now even I mean but I, I think it's something this is a one-time shot 
for the town to use $4.1 million. And I don't think we can make a decision uh, slow enough. I don't know if that's the right word, but let's not too fast. How's that? Okay? And we are, I agree with all that. I'll just say you know, we've got a $150,000 eye and eye study. That's probably going to, I mean, all the, in order to make that make sense to pay for now, it's going to require work when you get the study back to say, well, here's the things we have to do. Okay. Uh, we got now, now there's million, potentially millions of dollars of work to do to address the I and I problem. You've just spent $150,000 to identify. And to, to me, it comes down to, we, we have so many needs, let's not create a new need. And just that, to give you an to. example, you know, what, a little bit we were talking about, you know, this concept of looking at a pump station to potentially eliminate some of the interceptor line, um, you're talking about a $350,000 expense for a pump station. When you're talking what's coming behind the analysis. Study. This money will be gone before we know it. Right. This is this is the Parkinson's principle. Work will expand to occupy the space provided it. So we will we will spend the money, and it will be gone. And we have got to be on the other side of that in a better position. If not, we are not doing our jobs. Right. And I. And I Agreed. So. I'll, so I'll so stop. That's, listen, I, I believe in the in the, the democratic process. Right. I, sure. I'm okay being on the the downside of this. I I believe that part of of what government is here to also do is to improve people's lives as well, right? I mean, nobody needs a park, but you know what? People love parks, and, people, and parks do a lot of great things. Uh, and I, I personally think that maybe we do need parks, right? I feel the same way about the broadband. You know, we've, we've been given this opportunity. If the council says no to that, I'm fine with that, right? I, I, I'm totally okay with that. Um, I mean, but I look, so you also go, go ride around town and look at all the streets. I can name... I, I, I can you. name a lot of streets that, that also need repair. And, and private entities aren't in the business of providing parks, right? This is something that's not going to be provided. A park is not going to be provided by another private entity. Right? There's nobody in the for-profit park space. Right. There is, there, there are plenty of people in the for-profit broadband space. Yeah. And you're telling, I mean, I think with Northbrook on one end and Symphony Village on the other, who's to say? It doesn't make then sense because they're getting all those rate payers mm -hmm. with a you know a, a dense neighborhood. Then it doesn't make sense to run those lines down the telephone poles and get to Chesterfield and Watson and down Belvedere and then mm -hmm. the Heights. I mean, I don't know when I the last time I talked to anybody about this, th there was no question that they could make money downtown. Okay, so if if it's consensus that we don't put that in there, that's totally fine. Maybe what we should do is is. Have Kip come back next week with that list of other priorities and see if we can, you know, figure out some of that remaining amount, right? So if we had 2793 was after the enterprise capital and we're using 350 for project managers. That right? leaves 2443710. 244? 3710. Right, and if we did a $1.5 million towards... Hold on, it's 244 million? Yeah. 2443 Seven ten left. Okay. So if we did one and a half towards a farm, that would be like nine hundred some thousand, right? Yep. Do we have consensus that the, the broadband is not going to be one that we're going to look at at this point? That we're not going to. I think that would should be. It. it could be there, but it's definitely behind water and sewer. Yes. I think our people. We've just raised the rate two years in a row. Yeah, we take it off for now. Okay. All right. So that would. So what about the consensus of of the the mark for of 1.5 million for a farm? I'm for it because we need it. Okay. We're going to need it. I'm for it. I would like to prioritize putting as little of that on the debt books as possible. Yeah. Agreed. All right. So so if we have two four four left, we could almost buy a farm, mm -hmm. but then that's going to give us nothing remaining. Right. 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 Or we could take one and a half million. And then have it zero sum if we were able to take that loan out and still have nine hundred and forty some thousand dollars for capital projects to get those done now. Whereas if we bought a farm outright, 
and we're getting 50 grand, let's say we get $50,000 a year every year for rent, how long is it going to take for us to do that, to do $50,000 for the capital projects, right? I mean, you're looking at 20 years, right, for the same amount of money. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Okay. I'm for buying the farm. All right. So, is there, Shelby, do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Um, a whole nut or 1.5 million? I'm saying 1.5 million, which would then oh, give oh, us no, okay. 900,000 left, 900 some thousand left, right? That we would have then for 2023, where we've already identified water and sewer projects, correct? Is that, is that what I'm reading? Come up with Gips? priority of roads, right? Yeah. 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 But that would be potentially for this fiscal year. Yes. For this, not for this fiscal year. But we, fiscal year, fiscal years out. But remember, we get, we're getting it in two slugs. I know, right, but all Karen? this, but all this fiscal year, though. But but here's the thing, right? Can you get all those projects done? That's a, that's what I was going to ask. Right. So 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 we're carrying nine hundred thousand dollars to fiscal twenty three. Yeah. I'm I'm for the I'm for yeah. The, yeah 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 yeah. And I mean, whenever we get the money, I'll just bank some interest on it as well. Well, I, I, so, so we'd be going into next fiscal year with $900,000 ready to spend on capital. Yes. Yeah. But I think you just said uh, an operative question. Can we get the projects done? No, that's why he said no. He said can, no. Can, that's can why we're going to hold the money. Yeah, for it's got to go year. into the second year. The reason I'm saying no and is because of what you were talking about before. Spend that money on a project manager we can get a whole lot more done because they'll have the packages ready to go out for bid is what i'm hearing they will they will be the ones preparing it instead of steve and i and maybe mike whitehill or somebody else oh, you guys have got the day-to-day -day operations right, right. right. And how's that right so doing that would just give you the number nine forty three seven ten would be left to carry and two cents no <laughs> no cents all right, so so I think we're we're kind of at the at the end here for right now, right? I mean, I, I think you can present the the priority list if you want next week, and and we can kind of put that down for next year, right? For next fiscal year. Yeah. I'll get you guys a complete packet of what will be adopted um, next week with all the decisions made tonight. A final clean package, not as many papers, I promise. Not as many options? No <laughs> options. No <laughs> options. No options. I'm Not adopted raise... next week, but eventually adopted. Right, eventually. <laughs> I have, yes. I have one Can't other thought there. in that I have see the chief sitting there very stoically and, and listening. Uh, I want to address what he has brought up in the past, and I still think we haven't, is... Our law enforcement officers need a better house, so to speak. And I'm looking forward to getting that design study done. That'll at least give us what are the parameters for a new building. And I think taking care of today's business is great, but having the wharf the town hall that is in need of repair. I don't know how to say it, but inadequate uh, facilities for our law enforcement officers. The whole idea, and that's why we put it, I put it number one priority to get the design of that new building. We need to also keep that on our radar screen because it's, it will serve the citizens and bring the town of Centerville, and this might sound whatever, bring us into the 21st century. I mean, the town hall is how old? Okay. Uh, I, I still can't get over the fact of the square footage that our LEOs are confined to. I'll just leave it at that as a broad statement. That to me is not acceptable. And I'm sure the chief has made his recommendation for space requirements. I'm sure uh, Carolyn and Crystal and, and everybody. I think we need to bring, and it'll be a, 
a shining, nice new building that it will show to the town and to the county and to the state. But we're looking forward. And I, and I, 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 I'm for everything that to give our people, our people, my people, your people, the capability to do their job properly. So I would agree. And what I would say is that it's going to take money to do this. And we're fortunate that we're able to get this money to, to do a lot of the back stuff. But things like the differential, it's going to be super important for the county to give the town the, uh, the full oh, amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even still, we're still going to need it, right? We're still going to need a portion of that. So yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's important that the whole council gets behind, you know, the differential and not only having the county give it all to us, but also uh, oh, I, you know, I mean, using I, some of it uh, for, for, for the backlog of the stuff. And, uh, and not that I expected Steve to bring this up, but I brought it up in my discussion with Steve in that we're keeping the tax differential mm -hmm. for the town. It's not going out to the taxpayers. And I kind of, I, I voted no, okay? But I've been thinking about it. And I think if we're gonna do what we voted to do, okay, which is probably the appropriate thing, all right? We need to get ahead of it. And not just all of a sudden, oh, guess what? You're not getting your tax differential this year, folks. There's enough, uh, how should I say, good people here that we can write and inform the town, give them the rationale, the reason, the facts, why, we're not, why they're not getting their tax differential. And I would bet, uh, I'm not a betting man, but I would bet people would be Oh, I'm not getting my reduced tax bill because if you give them the facts, most people, I think, you know, will go, oh, yeah, there'll be the few that'll scream, yell, whine. But I, I think most people will understand that the, the people they elected is doing the job that we were elected for to do the right thing. Is that so correct? I'm all for writing a letter, but we got to do it at the end of the budget so uh, no, no, everything no, is no, done. No, like, yeah, no. <laughs> but I'm saying they're going to hear about that and not maybe a letter to the editor, a letter to the paper, or however we want to present it. But I, I ho hope we don't do a surprise is what I'm saying. And that's when you'll get a lot of pushback. At the risk of being argumentative, <laughs> what... <laughs> You voted against it. So where is this coming from? It's reflecting on it. Listening. Okay, my first reaction was I voted against it. And what I'm saying now, Steve, in thinking about it some more. Okay, that's why I'm saying, we, you know, we're here for, what, an hour or two or whatever. And we're making decisions. I've had a chance to think about it some more. Look at the budget. Talk with Steve. Talk with Kip. And it was probably the right decision. But now that we've made that, it's a different decision than citizens ha are expecting. I, I jokingly say, God help us when the news gets to Symphony Village. Okay? But and there are people there that I know, if we lay it out why we made that decision, Okay. Would you have voted for it? Would you have voted in favor at this point? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm, 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 the vote is there, but I'm saying we can vote again. Whatever. So but the I'm, county but just I'm, published their their uh, their budget today, uh, and it is the exact amount that Karen had put out there. I mean, I, I thought about this <coughs> for two weeks ahead of time reading this budget. So you, you know, an hour a week, an hour every week, this is the toughest decision in public service, not that I've been doing it that long, that I've had to make. Yeah. Because the last thing I want to do is raise people's taxes. Right. But I didn't see how we had any other choice. 
I'm prepared to talk about that with anybody who asks. Uh, I'm not quite as positive on people's reaction if you give them the facts on taxes as you might be, but I'm prepared to talk about it with anybody. I'm happy to sign something, write something up. Uh, I, I just, there was no other decision to be made. Uh, and looking ahead at a new building for the police, uh, for the whole town, uh, you know, all these other things that are in the mix, uh, I don't see how we back away from that position, at least in the near future, I'll say. I'm not going to commit myself to future votes, but uh, I, See, that's I what know. I like about this group. I mean, and you, you've heard me say it before. We can maybe look at problems or issues from different viewpoints, from different backgrounds, knowledge. I mean, I depend upon Steve and Kip and Karen and Crystal. They have more knowledge than I do. But then there's the knowledge that sits here, my teammates, so to speak, that I, I enjoy these discussions because I think it's the right thing to do. That's, that's something that should be done. So I, I do think that presenting a unified, uh, unanimous front, knowing that Jeff can't really be involved in, in that decision, really would be helpful to, yeah. to present to okay. the commissioners. Yeah. So if someone, you know, so what you're saying is that if another motion was made to to reiterate or reinforce that, then you would be you'd be a yes on that. Yes. Okay. I think you made the original motion. Would you want to make it again? Are you interested in doing that? Or sure. You? I'm. I'm. I'm <laughs> I'll walk the plank again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll move that we retain the t fiscal 22 deferential for the town. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. <laughs> One, yeah. Good show, Bob. Good show. Really? No, uh, really. I mean, I enjoyed tonight, Steve. We, you know, we got it. We got into it, and and I've said this when we were on the campaign trail. I felt comfortable knowing that the four of us and the other five that didn't make it, we have the ability to talk. We we bring different strengths to the table. So I'm very pleased. All right, so next time you're going to present a finalized budget with all the decisions that we've made. And that'll just kind of be a, we're going to look at it and, and kind of take a, take a view. Yes. Kip, you're going to come back with some, some highlights of what your recommendation is going to be for the next fiscal year uh, for water and sewer type stuff. Um, so we have it scheduled for 530. I don't think we need to meet at 530. Uh, do you think if we met at 630 or, or, or even 6? Let's do it at 6. I, would, I would definitely wouldn't do 6.30. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we do 6 o'clock? I mean, you, you might just get into more discussion than you think. <laughs> when you start to, trying to prioritize. Okay. I, I'd rather keep it at 5.30. And I can swing 5.30. I mean. All right. I mean, that's fine. You know what? To me, I, I get where we're going to be going from with KIPP and making prioritization, but that's a whole other fiscal year out. And things may change, right? You've already got your priorities. You know what those are. We can come back next year and say, now we've got LEOBR, or I mean, we've got LEOPS, and that's going to take a chunk away. And that's an important thing for right. us to do. Right. So I'm OK with having that exercise, but you already know what your millions of dollars worth of prioritization is. Well, if you want to go 6, but I would not go 6.30. Okay. Let's just okay. say that. All right, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. And we're here. Don't forget, right? Yeah, we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we were scheduled for 6 anyway. Yeah. All right. Next, we've got citizens forum. Are there any citizens that want to have a uh, that want to have their their three minutes? Hearing none, uh, I will take a motion to adjourn. Unless anybody else has anything else they want to add. One. One Sorry, one. All thing. right. Go ahead. You can go. Just on your, um, I don't know that you changed the timeline. We're moving the oh. Um, oh, public hearing from May sixth to May twentieth for the okay. budget and. Constant Thank yield. You. Okay, and then and what is the night that we have but that we have uh, to actually vote on the budget? That will be uh, the adoption of the budget. Yeah, that's June third. That will be first, June third. First meeting in June. All right. Yeah. So so just so everybody knows from a historical perspective, we've typically only had one meeting in June, right? And then also same thing for July and August. So 
we certainly can meet twice in June if everybody wants, but you know, we'll have had all of these budget meetings and all these budget hearings and uh, not as the much. The only as going on. thing that we came up with is um, because April 15th still had a budget meeting or a budget work session, we weren't going to present the ordinance and the draft budget until May 6th, which means you would have had a public hearing prior to introducing the ordinance, which I don't know that you can't not do that, but um, so then we talked about just, um, you'll have your first reading of the budget on the 6th and then the public hearing on the 20th and then 20th. consideration okay. on June 6th, right. June 3rd. 3rd. Okay. Uh, since we're talking about June, I am oh, going. Oh, anything sorry. else? Are you done? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm sorry. Go uh, I will be on the left coast in Seattle the end of June, from like what is that? The 19th. My son is wonderfully renting a house. He's okay. a pilot out there, so going to get the 19th see the until when? What? The 19th until when? Until July 4th. So you won't be going to MML? Go to Ocean City. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's a hot mic. Hot mic. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Oh. <laughs> All right, so you can figure that part out. Yeah. Jeff, you had something else you wanted to go over. I know. Steve hey, was talking I about like, the, what's the, right. the future. You know, roads don't last forever. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I don't know if the, <laughs> the past councils have put any money aside, but we need to start putting money aside for future roads. Like Northbrook, Symphony Village, those roads are not going to last forever. So I'm talking about milling and overlaying. You don't have to do the water and sewer, so it's not as, as, as much of a cost. But still, as sitting here today, we need to plan for the future. Like we need to start putting money aside. I know we got a lot of money we got to spend, but we also need to put, start putting money aside for for those roads. I was just lift, lift, uh, going through the, the list, and there are there is significant line items for repaving. A lot of streets already in that's, the budget that's and that, we need to do it we don't as like i'd like to say kick the can down the road we can't we, we can't kick the can down the road because like you're going to see a street like weeden street oh god and end up like weeden street that's once horrible. you start getting those cracks that's what it ends and up like. has already gotten their cracks exactly. a lot of their cracks filled in yep. Northbrook season. so Northbrook. i mean I, i'm i'm very happy that we've got a council here that is forward thinking and forward looking i mean yes. it really it's important did you have anything else? That's it. Steve, did you have anything you want? Nope. Shelby? Nope. All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.